Hey, welcome back guys, it's Slider Havoc here, and we are back on 10 Minute Tutorials, and in today's episode, we are going over power in Matter Overdrive. And as you can see, I've got a little system set up here, so you can kind of get an idea for what you can do for it. I just kind of made this little pyramid thing, because I was trying to think of a structure that would kind of look interesting. I actually think it looks hideous, but... You know, I didn't want to redo it, so I just kind of left it as is. But if you look inside, you can kind of see we've got one of these little anomalies here. It's doing its thing. We've got this little stabilizer sitting around, and we're going to show you all about this in just a moment. Let me go and grab this guy here. Creative. Thank you. Gravitational anomaly. I want to show you how effective this whole power system can be. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go ahead and disconnect this one, because we are going to redo this right over here. So this is a gravitational anomaly. You will find these uh, randomly around your world as well as potentially in chests depending on what your settings are on the server that you're playing on or on your own single player mode if you have it set up to put it in chest. That's totally up to the way you change your settings in the config files. But you can find these gravitational anomalies. And basically what these do is these create a uh, energy source for or a power source for the mod. Now I grabbed all the wrong items for this one. Um, stabilizers, I'm going to need that, some of these coils, some of these holes, and where's my controller? Oh, let me just go grab it. I think I saw it. Grab a controller, and we're going to go ahead and get this guy set up. I'm going to just fly through this because it doesn't take a lot of explanation of what to do as much as like what we can do with it. So the first thing you're going to need uh, to harness the power of a gravitational anomaly is you're going to need to set down this guy right here. This right here is your fusion reactor controller. As you can see, it gives you an outline of where all the blocks for the system are going to need to be. And as you see, I'm one off. So I just break this guy right here, set him down. Now the anomaly is in the right spot, and we can start building this guy. Now, as I've told you before, I'm not going to show you the recipes because you guys can always look those up on NEI. Just remember, Fusion Reactor Controller is the first thing you're going to need. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is... All right, sorry about the little break there. Uh, got a brand new puppy, a little schnauzer puppy, and it was getting really aggressive and started to fall off the bed, and I was freaking out and jumped out of my chair to go stop it. But anyways, back to what we're doing. Yes, uh, you can look up the recipes yourself. I'm just going to show you the parts and how it goes together and then how you can modify it and make it, you know, improve it and make it more efficient. So like I said, the first thing you're going to do is a fusion reactor controller. You're going to need some of these fusion reactor coils. Now these two don't actually belong here, but I'm just doing it so you can kind of see the universality of it. But the three middle blocks on each side of the uh, structure need to be these uh, reactor blocks. Then you just fill in the rest of the spots with these coils here, or sorry, not coils, uh, machine holes. And once we get the last couple put in, we'll go check our system and you'll see that no longer says invalid, but now it says it's power 100%. And then there's no charge and no matter because there's no backup charge in it because, well, we haven't started it yet. So the next thing we're gonna need to do is grab our decomposer. So we're gonna make a new decomposer, or you can use the same one as long as you're piping out, you know, in your own way. And we're gonna go ahead and, oops, wrong one. We're going to put the decomposer down here. Now, it's going to need a little jump start of energy, so I can grab, I think I've got a battery in one of these. There it is. We can grab a battery here and just jump start the system. And there we go. So we've got a little bit of a power to start it. Now, there are other ways to do it, and that's why I actually uh, had these in my inventory, because these are what I was going to go over first, but then I realized you can see the thing right there, so might as well just get started on it, right? Um, so there's some flux duct there, and then an energy cell here. These guys are really, really simple, and this is actually one of the easiest, most uh, basic power settings you can do, and I will show you because I want to show you how cheap they are. A little bit of quartz, some coal, some glass, one of these machine casings, which is really, really simple, and um, a couple of these isolinear Mark IIs, which is just the gold with the Mark I. Really, really cheap to make. But you can make like, you know, we'll say like nine of them. And we just throw down an energy cell. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to create a little nine by nine grid. And I'm going to show you how much energy you can really generate really, really quickly as a fully renewable source. So you don't even have to worry about like, you know, adding anything to it. So we're going to throw down nine of these solar panels. Am I really like that close? There we go. Just, oops. There we go, and there we go. 
and you can see that that thing is just filling up quickly. It is already up to almost 90,000 just from nine of these panels. That's actually a pretty decent amount of RF to get started. Um, I, I, th I don't know what the rate is right now. Um, they're not storing anything, obviously, because you know it's going straight to the other one or whatever. But these are going up in, I mean, that's a thousand a second, just about less than a second. So that's a lot of RF really, really fast. So the solar powers are a great way to get started. And you can use that to jumpstart your things instead of having to use these batteries like, you know, I've been doing where I just throw the battery in. Anyways, moving on. That is the solar powder, uh, panel. The solar panel is a really, really good setup, and it's really quick and cheap to make right off the bat. Now, as for this guy, as you can see, we're not generating any power. But if we were, we would be getting 136 RF per tick, right? The way we generate some power is if we go ahead and throw one of these objects that, you know, we know how to make, like dirt, grass, cobble, all that, and it just starts pumping these into the system, and it's creating matter. Well, once this guy gets matter, it stores it over here as potential power. Now, it's not creating any power because we don't have anything hooked up to it yet, but say I have this little energy cell right, oops, energy cell right here. Oh, this one has 64,000, whatever and I go ahead and connect it this way, you'll see it just starts going up right really quickly. Now that is because it's putting out at 136 RF per tick. Now we can increase that, and that is something as simple as feeding the anomaly. If we fed this anomaly more matter, so let's just do this here. Let's just get a whole bunch of matter to feed it, and just go ahead and throw those in there. As you can see, it's just going to suck it right in. Oh, oh, what, 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 what the frick happened there? Uh, that was interesting. Okay. Anyways, I guess we'll just do it this way. Drop them in like that. And now you'll see that there's an increase. Not a huge increase, but now we're up to 141 RF per tick just from adding a little bit to that and creating that. Now... Let's say we have been playing for about a week or two or three or <clears throat> we've got chest full of cobblestone. We can go ahead and represent a chest full of cobblestone with this little quadruple compressed uh, cobblestone right here. And you'll see that this thing is actually going to increase in size or change a little bit. Not drastic, but a little bit. And it's just going to keep getting bigger and bigger. Now we're up to 263 RF per tick. And you'll see that's just going to start going up really, really quickly. And all it costs us is a little bit of dirt, cobblestone, grass, whatever. It's a pretty cheap and effective system, right? Now, there is a way to get these things insanely big. Or if you do happen to get one of these things insanely big, there is a way to control it. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to do something that's going to make this thing insanely big. All right, I'm going to grab a stack of octuple compressed cobblestone. Each one of these represents 43 million cobblestone. So I'm putting in 43 million times 64, and we're just going to throw it into the system. But before I do that, I'm actually going to put one of these down because this is going to fully engulf me. All right, so what this little stabilizer does here is it basically gets this thing under control, right? It, it, it prevents it from getting astronomically large by basically like, stabilizing it. Now watch this. That thing is getting huge. So huge that if I didn't have these stabilizers holding it in place, it would engulf this entire area. And I will show you that in just a second as we go over uh, there and I can kind of show you the power difference of what we're getting. But with that huge stack, we are now up to over 20,000 RF per tick. That is just insane. Look how fast that energy cell is just filling up. That's just awesome absolutely awesome and uh, lastly and then these guys are they're pretty cheap to make as well um, like I, said, I, I wasn't gonna show recipes but I'll show this you know just to show that they are pretty cheap it's a little sign this little uh, this little guy right here Jeez, I keep pressing the wrong button um, pretty cheap it's a little compensator I mean you guys can look up the recipes it, it takes a minute to put them together but once they're together they're really really useful let me show you why this thing is so useful watch if I take one away not a not, not a huge deal, but you can see it's getting bigger. If I take a second one away, it's it's getting pretty out of control. If I take a third one away, it has almost encompassed the entire unit. And if I take this last one away, I'm fully inside the circle. Like, it is just domed out. 
Um, it's actually pretty mammoth, as you can see. You wouldn't want that. So the stabilizers uh, are obviously going to be pretty useful uh, for keeping it to a reasonable size. <clears throat> but then again, you're never going to get one quite that big. Well, I'm not going to say never. It, potentially, you could play this game for five or six years and eventually get it that big. But you're never going to get it that big. It's just, it's just not reasonable. So that is basically your power. And it's, it's really, really simple. Um, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and take you out real quick. And I want to put on just a brand new... Okay, this one's got a charge of 64,000. Uh, is there anything? Okay, there's nothing stored. Nothing weird. I want to show you this because this is actually going to show you the efficiency of this system. All right, so you're connected. You're receiving power. 64. Okay, this is just going to be one piece of dirt or one piece of grass. That's all I'm going to throw in here. I want to show you how much power you get from one piece of grass. All right, so that it's going to use a little bit of power because it's going to fill this thing back up. But you can see it's pumping out here. And 230,992 for one piece of grass, right? 230,000 RF for one piece of grass. And to give you an idea and to finish up this episode, I want you to understand how efficient that really is. First of all, it's grass. It's grass, it's dirt, it's cobblestone, it's cheap, right? I put up together a couple dynamos here from Thermal Expansion and to show you kind of what you get from them. So one piece of coal in a steam dynamo, we ran it and we got 44,000. Remember, 230,000 over there for one piece of dirt. Um, <clears throat> a liquefied coal bucket with some water as a coolant and a compression dynamo, and we got a, what, a million? So it had taken us five pieces of dirt to equal, or equal this. I, I think that's kind of worth it. Um, 640,000 for one blaze powder with some destabilized redstone. We got uh, 64,000 for one piece of redstone by itself in the Innovation Dynamo. And then we got 180,000 for one bucket of lava in a Magmatic Dynamo. Regardless of anything, I, I would definitely say that building this system right here is totally worthwhile. Because once you've got it, it's just so worth it. Just throw those in there. It's going to just keep pumping out. And you're going to just watch this power just shoot up. And it's so fast. Now, granted, like I said, this you'll, you'll never get an anomaly that big. And I've got one that's a lot more under control over here. And let's see. I've got a screen up top so we can see what this one's at. So this one's at 13,801. That's a decent mass. Um, we can actually throw... I don't want to throw that in there. Let's go back and throw another week's worth of cobble in there. See what that turns us into. Um, did it, did it not take it? I didn't see a change. Why aren't you taking it? Oh, it's trying to pull to the other one. Haha. <laughs> I didn't even realize that. That's too funny. Um, let me go in here and do this. Did it, I can't tell if it's going or if it's trying to go to this one over here. Let me go ahead and break this one so we can see. Uh, there we go. <laughs> that was kind of funny. All right, so trying to throw these in here again. Uh, let's see, did it accept either of those? Yeah, it did. So now we have a mass of 26,923 or whatever. And basically the way that this system is going to be really, really efficient, you can see I just put a whole bunch of uh, stacks of grass in here. Mostly because it's just the top layer of what I'm working on. But you would probably be using, you know, dirt and coal and whatever. But basically, we just kick it in through here. I like these uh, titanium crates, tritanium crates that come with the mod. I just, they're really cool. It's just a chest with some tight tritanium metal around it. I've just got to run in through a really, really simple item duct and a four thing servo. So it's only putting in four at a time. And it just kind of keeps this thing full. The matter is constantly going in here. And as you can see, this is filling up. Now, basically, if I disconnected this at any given time, you know, it's just going to burn up this matter and cre keep creating power. Anyway, it's just a very, very efficient system. And you can see I'm getting 488 uh, RF per tick. That was for like 6,000 cobble. Um, actually, I think I threw one more in there. It's like 12,000 cobble, um, which is very easy to come by. And I think that's a pretty darn efficient system to get 500 RF per tick. And as you can see, it's it's slowly got a charge. It's filled with matter. This thing's going to run for a very, very long time. Even if I you know, disconnect it and uh, turn it off or whatever. Go ahead and take all this out. Like, 
it, it's just going to run and run and run and run. And right now, I'm just going to do nothing but drain it. Like, it's not putting anything else in. It's just pulling power out now. See, so the charge is gone. But we can go ahead and, you know, run our, you know, let's let's make a, a couple pieces of grass here. All right? 16 pieces of grass. So this thing's going to start burning energy. But it's putting out energy so quickly that it's actually putting out more than it's actually uh, using. So it's just staying fully charged. The matter decomposer, if I, you know, threw a couple in there, once again, it's putting out power so quickly that these aren't even touching it, it like it's not even you know acting like it's using any and it's just burning up the matter over here which are those blocks we put in which is there's a backlog so really really efficient system and this is going to help us when we move to our next thing in our next episode which we're going to be going over uh the robotics and the weapons so until next time guys i'm sutter havoc this is 10 minute tutorials matter overdrive and we're out of here peace